The Secret is out, nobody likes Spelljammer, and those who do don't like the ship combat. Because there is no ship combat. But to be fair, ship combat in a tabletop RPG is hard. Actually, it's not just hard. It goes against everything a tabletop RPG is about. People play an RPG to roleplay an individual character. It's the differentiator between an RPG and a war game. Putting a bunch of characters into a boat removes autonomy. Instead of role-playing one character, the player now has to coordinate with other characters in an attempt to keep an imaginary machine running. It can work. I mean, it technically works in Starfinder, but at best it's boring for some, and at worst it's frustrating for everyone. Of Ships and Sea, the appendix in Ghosts of Saltmarsh that ostensibly provides naval battle mechanics, suffers from the same problem. You put characters into a box, you imply that suddenly they have a hierarchy, someone plays a captain, someone plays the bosun, someone plays the first mate, you demand that they coordinate with other characters, and then you expect them to have fun. It just doesn't work. But I have played a lot of Starfinder, and over the years I've developed rules for simplified starship combat, and recently I ported them over to Spelljammer. I'm going to review those rules with you now. I have playtested these rules in Starfinder extensively, because I've played that longer than I've played Spelljammer for 5e, because one has been out longer than the other, and I've playtested it in Spelljammer some. The one rule that differs most notably between Starfinder and Spelljammer is the line of sight. So one way that I keep my magic users in Starfinder engaged is by allowing them to cast spells on anything that is line of sight. Due to the magic mystery of outer space, magic just, it just works differently. And when there's a range to a spell, I let them override that in space by saying that space somehow affects the magic, and as long as they can see something, they can target it with a spell or a spell attack. Now, in Starfinder, this gets really interesting because you have video screens, and you can see, you can talk to people over a video screen, and now suddenly you have line of sight on them. It becomes a really interesting mechanic there. In Spelljammer, you don't have that, and so I'm, I'm not quite sure yet how magic and line of sight will interact in Spelljammer. It is something I'm interested in trying and experimenting around with, but I think to get a really good feel for how that could be abused, I'd need to play from low level to high level and test it out. But here are the rules that I'm using currently in my games. This is a simple system for the missing ship combat rules in Spelljammer. It's meant to encourage players to work together. Hits are intentionally powerful, and tactical movement is rewarded, so combat is ideally resolved in just a few rounds. For some, this may be too simple. For others, this is a quick and fun way to have space combat in Spelljammer games. Rolling initiative. At the beginning of combat, roll initiative for each ship using the initiative modifier of the creature attuned to the ship's helm. Highest roll goes first or has the option to delay, forcing the opponent to act first. Actions. As usual, each player gets a move and an action each round, not counting bonus actions. The enemy ship has actions equal to two times the number of crew members listed in its stat block. Movement. Only the creature attuned to the ship's helm may move the ship. A ship moves up to its speed, but the equivalent of the dash action may be taken with a successful maneuver check. And I'll define what a maneuver check is momentarily. When playing without a battle map, don't count squares or use movement speed. Instead, there are three zones. There's close, near, and far. It takes one move action to move from one zone to the next, but with a successful maneuver check, a ship may move two zones in just one round. This makes it viable to flee or pursue when necessary. Damage. When a ship reaches half its HP, its attacks have 50% chance to fail, and all damage done to it has 50% chance of doing double damage. It's very likely that a damaged ship would flee from combat, or attempt to parlay. Helms. There are two kinds of spell jamming helms, minor and major. Both are identical to the helm described on page 23 of the Astral Adventurer's Guide, with one difference. A minor helm grants a plus 5 bonus to maneuver checks. A major helm grants a plus 10 bonus to maneuver checks. Player actions. Move. This is the spelljammer's action only, the one attuned to the helm. 
you can move the ship a number of squares equal to your ship speed, a minimum of one. Changing trajectory costs one square of movement. So you can turn your ship, but that, that takes away one square of movement from you. Attacks cannot be made during this move. To perform a flyby attack, you must do a maneuver action. Maneuver, spell jammer only. The creature attuned to the helm may make a wisdom check plus their helm bonus, so plus 5 for a minor helm, plus 10 for a major helm, against a DC equal to the ship's beam. A ship's beam is the width of the ship, which is listed in its stat block. I will admit I know nothing about boats, and I have no idea if this is physically sound, but this is outer space fantasy physics. We're using beam as a reliable and somewhat predictable wit uh, um, number to set a DC to. Upon success, you may move your ship twice in one round. Additionally, you may take part of your movement, attack, and then take the rest of your movement. Upon failure, your ship strains against the pool of astral forces and the spell jammer's will and takes damage equal to the ship's beam value, bypassing any damage threshold. Yes, you heard that correctly. If you try to push your f ship to go faster than it normally goes and you fail that check, your ship takes damage. You may always move through any ship's square because you can fly over or under a ship. Action. All crew. You may make any action you could normally make during ground combat, including moving around the ship, making ranged attacks, aiding another player, and so on. Alternately, you may take the ship combat action. I'll get to that in a moment. So your actions for ranged attacks, again, I haven't quite finessed this out. I haven't decided yet. Right now I'm using line of sight. If you can see your enemy, you can fire an arrow from, from a bow and arrow. You can use your slingshot. You can do whatever you can because I'm just saying that fantasy space essentially makes range normal. It, it, it normalizes range. I have not decided yet whether that's a great idea, but so far it has been working for me quite well, and it keeps the players able to essentially do ground combat without the ships necessarily being side by side. Ship combat. All crew. Fire one of your ship's weapons at any enemy ship. This takes two actions, because most cannons require multiple actions to load and fire. Several players may spend actions to operate a weapon. For example, a mangonel as listed in the Astral Adventurer's Guide, page 38, requires two actions to load, two actions to aim, and one to fire. That's five actions, meaning most parties aren't going to be able to get that done within a round. In my system, the Manganel takes two actions, one to aim, one to fire. Distance effect. When attacking, the distance between the, your ships affect your attack. You can always make an attack, but you might be able to attack with advantage or disadvantage depending on how far away you are. I know this seems like it's going against what I was saying earlier about range and outer space not mattering, but it, it's not saying you can't attack because of a range. It's saying that you attack better or worse depending on the range. So the fact that you can do a ranged attack no matter what is a benefit. This is how the range affects that attack. You count each row or column, whichever is greater, your missile or, or whatever you're firing must pass through to reach its target, not counting your own square. If you're not using a battle map, use zones instead of squares. If you are firing and your missile has to pass through two squares, or you're both in the same close zone, then you roll your attack with advantage. If you're attacking and your missile must pass through three to six squares, or one ship is in the near zone, then you roll normally. If you're attacking and your missile must pass through seven or more squares, or one of the ships is in the far zone, then you roll with disadvantage. That's it. Those are my rules for ship combat. It's not complex. It's actually designed to be really, really easy. The zone concept is a little bit difficult to sort of picture, but it's actually really easy in play. You just say, there's a ship, it's approaching, it looks like it's armed for battle. It's it's far away right now. That's, that's what it is. Once you roll initiative, ships that are far from each other have to spend a move action to get near 
and then another action to get close. So it necessarily takes some number of moves to get into a zone. Now, if one ship moves near and then the other one moves far, we're now chasing each other. If one ship moves near and then the other one moves close, well, now they're practically boarding each other, or they're very, very close to each other, close enough, certainly, to roll with advantage on their attacks. This system, this ship combat system, ensures that players stay engaged. Because if the players are really into ship combat, then they can they can run over and, and load the mangonel or the, the catapult or whatever they want to load and fire at, each, at, at the other ship. If one of the players doesn't care about that sort of thing and just wants to do cool magical spells or use their Legolas-like precision with their, their, their longbow, then they can do that as well. It's essentially a form of abstract ground combat. It feels practically the same. Try it out. You can download it from DM's Guild. Try it in your game. See how it feels for you. I hope it makes you like Spelljammer better. Thanks for watching.